Welcome to this edition of Field Notes. I'm Jeff Weisenberger, Senior Editor of Modern Steel Construction. And with me this time around is John Peruki, who is the National Head Judge for the AISC Student Steel Bridge Competition. Thank you for taking some time, John. Um, we're actually here in Texas at the first uh, regional um, competition for the Steel Bridge Competition um, for 2020. And we're in Arlington and at a very interesting looking eSports facility. Um, so can you, let's just talk a little bit about why you're here. How did you get here? You've been, you've been a long time uh, national head judge for this competition. Uh, how long have you been doing it and how did you get started? Well, I've been the head judge since 1995. Um, our Fabric Association started supporting this thing in the early 90s mm -hmm. and when there were smaller regionals. And our association and our members got involved and I ended up to being the head judge for the regions. Okay. And one day I got a phone call from Frommie Rosenberg. Yep. Uh, would you be interested in being the national head judge for the competition to be held in Buffalo mm -hmm. in 1996? He called me in 1995. I said yes. Who knew by saying yes? Uh, now I'm 27 years later or so. It's uh, um, I'm still here. Right. And it's exciting. Um, it's, it's wonderful to see the students participate and the real world applications of what they do. Great. Well, so what was it like uh, judging the first time? It was stressful. I mean, <laughs> you know, we're going down a path that nobody ever went before. Sure. Uh, with that number of teams uh, at a regional level, be having to be invited in to participate. So it was, it was interesting. We had a lot of stories. That was a, years of the one minute bridges. Um, what is what's a, what's the one minute bridge? Well, in those days, the rules are a lot different. We allowed a lot of things to happen that we don't allow now. OK, uh, we provided abutments for the teams to, to build on. Mm -hmm. We don't do that now. They have to use their own abutments. Sure. It's part of their bridge design. So things have changed considerably uh, over the years. Sure. But still just as exciting. Of course. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, in all these years judging, can you do you have any, you know, particularly memorable experiences? Well, I think they're all memorable in their own way. I sure. mean, each each national is, is different. They have their own challenges. Um, in the end, when we ring the bell at eight o'clock in the morning, everything runs. And, uh, you know, without the support of the host schools um, and the volunteers that support that. Sure. Um, nothing. Nothing that stands out as memorable. I mean, I've seen a lot of, a lot of bridges over the years. Right. Oh yeah, I can imagine. Um, well, so I mean, I'm not sure if you know, bridge uh, construction speed time evolves and like wait, you know, like with when it comes to Olympic sports and everything. You know, you hear about records being broken. You know, Usain Bolt, is the fastest man in the world. Yeah. Can't remember who the fastest the person was before that because you only talk about the fastest person now. But I guess what I'm getting around to is, is the competition has the build, would you say, over the years gotten faster and faster uh, on average? Um, I would tend to think the better teams are quicker. Yes. Um, doesn't necessarily they're going to be the best team. Sure. But we do have a wide range of uh, speeds throughout the year. I think last year we went for like five minute builds to wow. 35 minute builds. Sure. So, but that, you know, in of itself, the time is relative because it's the number of builders they use. Right. So a longer build with less builders mm -hmm. can actually be more efficient than a quick build. Right. With more builders in the overall. But if you're going for speed, yeah. I right. Mean, uh, uh, the fastest bridges are, are pretty quick. It happens Excellent. really fast. Excellent. Um, so talk a little bit about um, your history uh, in the steel industry. So it sounds like you used to run a fabrication shop. Well, I went back. I was in the Air Force and uh, okay. and uh, uh, got back home and got involved in my family business, this miscellaneous shop. Okay. And uh, eventually we ended up buying that, my mm -hmm. brother and I. And through a lot of things, uh, the economy, you know, we, we had to sell. Okay. And I went to work for a large fabricator running their plant mm -hmm. and then ended up being hired as president of another fabrication company. And I was that president for 20 years and okay. retired in 2003. All right. Now I do consulting work, or not more recently, but I have. I'm working for a large fabricators on site management mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and constructability issues. Okay. Over the years uh, since you started uh, judging back in the 90s, would you say the students have changed? Um, I would, yes. I think the students, back when I started, they were traditionally 
young students that, you know, were the 18, 19, 20 year olds. Mm -hmm. Now you see such a blend of students, their families, their second careers, their the the type of students are no longer the no longer graduated from high school. They've they've been in the market. They've been working for 10, 12 years. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they come with their families to the competition. They're mm -hmm. married. So a wide variety of, of, of teams. Gotcha. Uh, more diversity mm -hmm. than we, we had back then. Um, generally, I would say the age and, and, and how they relate to where they are in their life right now. Sure. So a lot of, lot of second careers starting here. Okay. And so it sounds like for, for you, this, this time of year, when the, so we're at early March now, and this is the first regional competition, and then nationals is always around or on, on um, Memorial Day weekend. This, this is almost like tax season for you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, you're, if you were an accountant. Yeah, this is where it all, it all starts, you know, all the planning starts up and it's an exciting time of year for me personally i'd like the uh, very first bridges to start put together mm -hmm. and uh we'll have maybe 190 bridges this year wow participate um and uh saddest time of the year for me is uh, at the end of the national competition right um so it sounds like you like to play golf well Play golf a lot. Is that an understatement? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is, is this like a, is this like a lifelong passion, or is this something that's cropped up in recent oh, years? Oh no, I've been golfing probably since I was twenty years old. Okay, so no, I I love golf. Oh. How, how, like, what do you have any uh, favorite courses? Um, I, I'm a member of a club in my area. Uh, I, I play Pebble Beach and okay. and uh, Dorrell, so. You know, I don't really have a favorite course per se. I'd like I'll go to any course. doesn't make a difference. To right. You, any, any, uh, I've, I've always heard any day on a golf course is not yes. a bad day. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Better than a good day at work. Right. Um, how often do you play nowadays? Uh, two or three times a week. Okay. When the weather permits. I'm from Rochester, New York. So. Right. Yeah, not like Florida. <laughs> yeah. We're restricted a little bit, but from, I'd say, uh, early April through October. Okay. You know, those early and late days are a little bit more challenging. Have you ever hit a hole in one? No. Uh, have I've you been, come close? I've been within one inch of a hole in one. Oh, oh, oh that's got to be frustrating. And, but I've lived with a couple of people who've had a couple hole in ones. I mean, it drives me crazy. Why not me? Right, right. Yeah, it's one of those those things you you, you hope it's sort of like a bucket list item as a <laughs> yeah. golfer, but you can't force it. You have yeah. to just do it, it. It happens. You know, you, you you know, when you hit the ball, that's your intent to put it in the hole. Right. You want every hole. Yeah, you exactly. want every, every uh, you know, exactly. it to be a hole in one. Sure. So what, what do you think that what is like one of the most important things about the competition? I mean, it seems like when, I, when I've been to a few of the national ones and it seems like one of the biggest things is this is very applicable to the real world. Yes. You know, we, we, we haven't designed a bridge because it it looks nice mm -hmm. and, and it's hard to design a, a a competition that you'd actually build a building right. in scale. But everything they do with a bridge is, it can be put into a bridge construction, it can be put into building construction. It's all scalable in size. It's all about connections, uh, designing members to, to hold loads, and actually going through and they learn project management, they, they learn how to work with other students, uh, some teams fabricate their own bridges. Some ship the bridges out for fabrication. And just getting through the system, they haven't, it's just not designing the bridge. They have to fabricate it, and they actually have to construct it mm -hmm. under conditions that we try to replicate real-world problems, uh, rivers, uh, restricted sites. Right. And, uh, and then they'd load it with 2,500 pounds of steel and... And as I, I say, many times, especially at the regionals, when they have a collapse, mm -hmm. it's sometimes a eureka moment for the students. Sure. They see something that no model could ever have showed them. Mm -hmm. That, wow, that connection should not have been there. Right. Or I did it incorrectly. Mm -hmm. And it's a life lesson I think they, they remember if they continue on and right. steal. Sure. So... It collapses not a bad thing under themselves. Right. In the long term. Sure. I, I was at a national event and a bridge collapsed and immediately the team captain said, well, now we know what not to do next year. Yeah. yeah. I and mean, that's the, you know, engineering has been that way. I guess you learn from your mistakes. Right. So, no, I'm, I'm pleased with what students do and they take it away. With me, it's, it's funny. I'm now, I'm now conversing with 
students whose parents I judged. Wow. So it's uh, very interesting for me now. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time, John, and I'll let you get back to judging. Right. Thank you very much. All right. Take care.